the code of conduct of registered person. Okay, do you have the document with you? Have you managed to download yes. it? Yeah, okay. Now, you look at the first page there, okay, the, the second paragraph, the this circular supersede circular number 3 stroke 2005 guidelines for code of professionals conduct. Bracket BEM so RD so PPC so 08 bracket closing bracket okay that means this is a new document that is to replace or substitute the previous uh, code of conduct okay the previous code of conduct does not classify the crosses according to the five category as this uh, code of conduct of registered person the previous code of conduct for professionals conduct is only top. Uh, they didn't. They didn't differentiate between professionals, engineer, engineer, engineering technologies, and so forth. They all called register engineer. Okay. So, but for this code of conduct of registered person, which is uh, issued on uh, October twenty seven two zero one six, is a code of conduct for all the, all those personnel that register with board of engineers Malaysia, and it classify them according to professionals, engineer with practicing certificate professional engineer, graduate engineer, and then uh, engineering technologist and inspector of work. Okay, they classify into five parts. Now, let's look at it. Okay. So uh, in Malaysia, the engineers are governed by the registrations of engineering acts 1967, okay, incorporated amendments up to 2015. This is 012007. Yeah, up to 2015, there is a new amendment there. Okay, the one that you downloaded is uh, incorporating amendments up to 2015. Yeah, okay. Now, in the BEM Code of Conduct of Registered Person that you have downloaded, as I mentioned, it is classified into five different courses. Okay, one is professional and engineer with practicing certificate, two, professional engineer, third, and graduate engineer, fourth, engineering technologist, and five is inspector of work. What are the difference between these five? Okay, professional engineer with practicing certificate is the professional engineer that who can submit their drawing, their survey, their proposal or design to the authority for approval, okay? But this cannot be done by a professional engineer without practicing certificate. So this, this is the main difference. With the practicing certificate, I repeat, it can submit drawings, survey, proposal, design for approval of authority, whereas professional engineer itself, they are not able to do so. Graduate engineer are those who have received a formal engineering and engineering education, such as after you graduated, after you graduate from a Thai UC, you can immediately register with the Board of Engineer Malaysia as graduate engineers, okay? Now, I'm not sure whether you're aware or not. Now, there are, there are, there are some programs, they, they don't call it engineering, but they call it engineering technologies. Are you aware that there is this kind of uh, study now? So, for those who are accredited engineering technologies program, after they graduate, they can register with the Board of Engineers as engineering technologies. Okay? And those graduate of diploma in engineering usually will register as an inspector of work. So, under number five. Okay? Now, let's look at code of conduct of registered person, professional engineer with practicing certificate. Under this cross one, there are altogether 10 subsections, yeah? Okay? The cross one is registered professional engineer with practicing certificate, not to falsify qualifications, okay? That means and you, if you are a professional engineer with practicing certificate, you cannot claim that something that you are not in your qualifications, okay? You, you are not supposed to falsify your qualifications. And under this cross 1.1, there are 10 subsections. Yeah? What are they? Okay. 1.1.1a, a registered professional engineer with practicing license shall not falsify his qualification or permit in misinterpretation of his or his associate qualifications, okay? So you are not allowed to falsify to make to cheat your about your qualification or making people confused and misinterpret your qualifications. Huh? He shall not misinterpret or exaggerate his responsibility in or for the subject matter of previous 
assignment, you cannot exaggerate it. If you don't do it, say don't do it. Don't, don't, don't try to exaggerate your past experience, okay? He shall not misinterpret pertinent facts concerning employers, employee, associate, joint ventures, or past accomplishment, okay? So this is 1.1.1. Uh, then 1.1.2, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall check with due diligence, yeah? shall check carefully the accuracy of facts and data before he sign or endorse any statement or claim. Okay, that's when there are people asking you to sign, you need to check carefully uh, how, the, how accurate it is. Yeah, this is your responsibility, uh, don't simply sign. Uh, okay, he shall not sign on such document unless when necessary, he has made qualification on errors and inaccuracy. Okay, unless you have checked it through. Okay, otherwise we better don't sign. Then 1.1.3, a registered engineer, professional engineer with practicing certificate shall respond with reasonable time to communicate from board of engineer, uh, from board or any other relevant authority or matters pertaining to his professional service. Yeah. So if let's say BEM asking you something, so you shall re respond within the time frame that given by you or other authority is checking with you about your design and so on and so forth. So it is your responsibility to ensure that you respond to all this authority or the board of engineer Malaysia within the time frame stipulated by them. Okay, 1.1.4. A registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall undertake assignment only if he is qualified by education and experience in the specific technical field that assignment is in which he is to be involved. Okay, if let's say you are trained in a mechanical engineering, you are not allowed to undertake any assignment that at the construction site as civil engineer do. Okay, so this is a, uh, uh, you have to follow your expertise, your qualification of your educations, yeah. You cannot simply go from a, 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 a from mechanical to en chemical or to civil engineering. 1.1.5, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall approve and sign only those engineering documents that he has prepared or has been prepared under his direction or control. So when people asking you to sign, you check when beside the accuracy of the data that I mentioned just now, you can only sign those documents that is prepared by you or other people prepare under your instructions, okay, under your control and directions that other people prepare. Mm -hmm. If we are giving you a, a document that is prepared and supervised by another engineer, you are not supposed to sign. Okay, you are, if you sign, you are violating the code of conduct of registered person, 1.1.5. Okay, so 1.1.6, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not accept assignment and assume responsibility for coordination of an entire project and sign and stamp the engineering document for the entire project unless the engineering documents for each technical segment of the project is signed and stamped personally by the stamp personally wait I cannot read stamp personally by the qualified person who is involved in the respective segment of the project. So again, you are not simply uh, able to, to accept any assignment or sign any document. Yeah? You have to make sure that it is under a, a, a stamp and signed by a qualified person. 1.1.7, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall be objective in making professionals reports, statement, and testimony, so cannot be biased, okay? He shall include all relevant and pertinent information in such report, statement, or testimony, which should bear the date indicating when the information was current. So beside putting in the relevant information, you also need to put down the date to show that the, the, the information that provided by you is not outdated. Yeah, this is very important. The information is current. And 1.1.8, a registered engineer, professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not express publicly technical opinions that are not founded upon his competence and knowledge of the facts in the subject. If you are not the expert in that area, if you do not have the expertise, please do not express, do not announce anything publicly about the technical opinion. Okay? You can do so only in your area of competence. If you are mechanical engineering, don't disturb those, don't 
to issue any statement or, or technical opinion on civil engineering or chemical engineering. You get me? Okay, 1.1.9, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not issue any statement, criticism, or argument on technical matters that are inspired or paid by the interested party unless he has preferred preface his comment by explicitly identifying the interest of party on whose behalf he is speaking and we, by revealing the existing of any interest he may have in the matter, okay? You are not allowed to publish any or issue any statement or whatever when there is a conflict of interest involved, okay? For example, the very, very obvious one is, uh, you know, pharmaceutical company, okay? They, they, they tend to, to publish a certain article that is a, a study by the pharmacy or whatever. That is a conflict of interest, okay? So 1.1.10, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall notify the board in writing within three months. This is time frame is given. Uh, okay, if he is committed an offense involving force of negligence certification, fraud or dishonesty in Malaysia or elsewhere. And also, if he is going to the bankruptcy, you need to inform the board of engineers within three, three months, within three months time. Okay. So this is the section 1.1.1 up to 1.1.10. Yeah, the engineer, a professional engineer with practicing like certificate, not to falsify qualifications. So this is these are the requirements. Okay, the cross two. Cross two basically there are five sections. Basically, it is almost the same as a cross one, but it's only the 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 it is referring to the professional engineer without practicing uh, uh, sorry, we are still at the cross two. Uh. Okay, 1.2. So 1.2 is register professional engineer with practicing certificate to certify work only if he has control over supervision. That's how we already say. He or she not supposed to sign any document that if not prepared by him or not to be prepared by others under his control or in the directions, right? So this one is further elaborate that to certify work only if he has control over his supervisions. Okay, and under this cross number two, 1.2, there are five subsections there. 1.2.1, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall certify satisfactory completion of a piece of work only if he has control over the supervision of construction or installation of that work. Okay, and only if he is satisfied with that, the construction or installation has fulfilled the requirement of the engineering design and satisfaction. Okay, you can, you can only sign after you satisfy that the work is completed and the work is under your supervisions. Okay, and you are satisfied that the work of construction or installation has met all the requirement. Okay, so because after you sign, if anything happens, they will come back to you. Yeah, so please be very careful. 1.2.2, a registered professional engineer with practicing license or uh, practicing certificate who takes over a piece of work shall assume all liability and responsibility for the work done prior to, the, to his take of taking over. If let's say now you are taking over from somebody's work, right, and you, you cannot say that, okay, oh, oh, this work is not done by me, it's done by previous engineer. So they are, they are their whole responsibility. No, you will, you will assume the liability and responsibility for the works done prior before you take over also, okay? Because before you take over, you need to have a careful study, due diligence, study the work, whether is it meeting the requirement, is it law, uh, legally uh, constructed or not, uh, everything, okay? So if you are taking over from others, please be remember, you are also like, uh, like you assume and liability and responsibility for the work that done by others people, yeah? Okay, 1.2.3, a registered professional engineer with practicing, license, practicing uh, certificate shall not review facts, data, information without prior consent of the clients or employer, past and present. So even though you have, you have quit the job already, but if there is a confidential uh, information of your previous company, you are also not allowed to review the facts or the information, okay? Accept as authorized or required by the law, unless the law saying that, saying so that you need to uh, review it. Okay, otherwise you are not uh, allowed to review any 
any facts or data or information that for your previous employer or the current employer or customer, okay? Unless two conditions. One is it is authorized or required by the law or this information is contrary, uh, having, a, uh, having some problem dealing with safety, health, and interest of general public. Then in this case, you can, you, you can review. Other than that, you are not allowed to review. 1.2.4, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate, having knowledge of any violation of this code of conduct or any law of regulation shall report thereon to employee appropriate professional's body and where relevant also to public authorities and cooperate with the appropriate professional's body or proper authorities in furnish such information or assistance as, man, as may be required. In other words, if you find out that any practice that is violating this code of conduct, you need to make known it to the authority or your employer. Okay, you don't just keep quiet and, and, and let it go on and let the misconduct go on. Okay, last, when, a, when the professional advice of a registered a professional engineer practicing a certificate is overruled or amended contrary to his advice, the registered professional engineer with practicing license shall, if the amendment may in his opinion give rise to a situation that may endanger the safety, health and interest of the public, notify his employer or client and or such other authority as may be appropriate. Okay, if someone has changed your work, let's say you, are, you, 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 have, you, have signed, you have signed a completion of work in certain specification, a certain way or to construct it, and you find out that there are someone that changed your design or change the specification of the material that you use or whatever, which may cause a danger to the general public, you need to make known it to the, you need to make known to your employer or your customer or other authorities. Okay, this is your responsibility to take care to make sure that the design, the, the, the structure that you develop, the machine that you develop is safe, is safe for the safety and health of the general public. Okay, so this is cross 1.5, the last sections of uh, 1.2. Okay, let's look at the section 3. Registered professional engineer with practicing certificate not to accept benefit from more than one party. In other words, if I'm the uh, if, if you are the professional, you, you are the professional's body, uh, not professional's body, professional engineer, okay, you work with me, okay, and we are, we, we are making some uh, uh, electrical installation and so forth. So I have a few supplier. Yeah. So I'm your customer. I'm your client. So I, you receive, you receive a, a, a beneficial uh, money, monetary beneficial from me. So, and then one of my supplier, he also want to take my, my business. So he know that you are the one who judge the, the approval of the drawing design and so and so forth. So he also try to give you some benefits. So you are not allowed to receive the benefit from more than one party. Okay, it is illegal for you to accept the money or or give or whatever from my supplier. Okay, you can only get, get it from me only. Okay, so this is basically what the uh, the, the cross one point three mentioned, and there are high five subsection there. One point three point one, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not accept any benefit or compensation financial or Otherwise, from one from more than one party for professional engineering services on the same project, or for professional engineering services pertaining to the same project, unless the circumstances are fully disclosed and agreed by all the interested party, you can only accept it unless you declare it to your clients or to your employer. So that's why you make it transparent. Uh, then you may be allowed to, to do so. Okay, if you keep it to yourself, so sorry, you are violating the code of conduct for a registered person. Okay, 1.3.2, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall disclose all known or potential conflicts of interest that may influence or appear to influence his judgment or the quality of his services. So you find that if, let's say, you find uh, there are some conflicts of interest, you need to declare, okay, you need to declare it to your employer or, or interested party that there may be a, a, a conflict of interest in which area. Okay, 1.3.3, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not solicit or accept any consideration financial or otherwise directly or indirectly from outside agent in connection with the work. 
Again, as what I say, you are not allowed to receive money from the third party or fourth party. Okay, 1.3.4, a registered professional engineer with medicine certificate acting as advisor or director of a company or an agency shall not participate in decision with respect to professional engineering services solicited by or provided by him or his organizations. 1.3.5, a registered professional engineer with practicing certificate shall not solicit or accept a contract from a body or agency in which a principal or office of his organizations serve as a member of the body of agency unless the knowledge and consent of that body or agency is, uh, uh, is obtained. Okay, so this is basically the uh, cross three point uh, uh, cross one point three the five five uh, subsections. So all these are about the what we have discussed so far is about the code of conduct. What can and what can't the professional with en professional engineer with practicing certificate can do. Okay. So now let's look at cross number two, where is related to professional engineer without practicing certificate. Okay. Is also having uh, one, two. There are there are two 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 sub uh, two crosses, and then the two point one again same as the professional engineer with practicing certificate, register of professional engineer not to falsify qualification is the same thing. Is having nine section uh, nine subsections. Okay. 2.1.1a, a registered professional engineer shall not falsify his qualification or permit misinterpretation of his or his associate qualifications. He shall not misinterpret and exaggerate his responsibility in or for the subject matter of a uh, previous assignment. He shall not misinterpret pertinent facts concerning employees, em employers, employee, associate, joint ventures, or past accomplishment. This is the same as the uh, for, for the professional engineer with practicing license. Yeah, this course is the same. 2.1.2, a registered professional engineer shall check with due diligence the accuracy of facts and data before he sign and endorse any statement or claim. He shall not sign on no such document unless, where necessary, he has made qualification on error and accuracy. This is also same as a uh, practicing uh, Professional engineer with practicing certificate. 2.1.3 A registered professional engineer shall respond within reasonable time to communicate from the board or any other relevant authority on matters pertaining to his professional service. Same as professional engineer with practicing certificate. 2.1.4 A registered professional engineer shall undertake assignment only if he is qualified by education or experience in the specific technical field that the assignment in which he is to be involved. Same as the previously what we have discussed. 2.1.5, a registered professional engineer shall approve and sign only those engineering documents that he has prepared or has been instructed other people to prepare under his control. Okay. So basically, the for the professional engineer, the code of conduct is almost same, is almost the same as the professional engineer with certificate, with practicing certificate, yeah. 2.1.6, a registered professional engineer shall be objective and truthful in making professional report, statement, and testimonies. He shall include all relevant pertinent information in such report, statement, or testimonies, which should bear the date indicating when the information was current. Yeah? 2.1.7, a registered professional engineer shall not express publicly technical opinion that are not founded upon his competence and knowledge and the facts of the subject is the same. 2.1.8, a registered professional engineer shall not issue any statement, criticism or argument on technical matters that are inspired or paid by the interested party. Same as a professional engineer with a practicing license. 2.1.9, a registered professional engineer shall, not, uh, shall notify the board in writing, if within three months, uh, if he is convicted of any offense involving false or negligent certification fraud or dishonesty in Malaysia or become a bankrupt. Okay, so all these are the same as the code of conduct for a registered professional engineer with certification, with practicing certificate. Okay, what are the cross number two for professional engineer? It's still the same. 
to certify work, it only he has all control control over the supervision. Okay, this one we have a five sections here. 2.2.1, a registered professional engineer shall certify satisfactory completion of a piece of work only if he has control over the supervision of the constructions. Okay, so it's still the same as a professional engineer with practicing license. A 2.2.2, a registered professional engineer who takes over a piece of work shall assume all liabilities and responsibility for the works done prior to his takeover. Okay. 2.2.3, a registered professional engineer shall not review any facts, data, or information without the prior consent of the client or our employer, past and present, except as authorized or required by the law, when the withholding of such information is contrary to the safety, health, and interest of the public is still the same as the, what we have discussed previously. 2.2.4, a registered professional engineer Having knowledge of any violation of this code of conduct or any law or regulation shall report thereon to his professional engineer with practicing license. If you find out some somebody is violating the law or you or, or violating the, the, the regulations, you should report it to the engineer with practicing certificate. Or if there is no engineer with practicing certificate, inform your employer or and also uh, appropriate professional's body. Okay. Where relevant or also authority, public authorities and cooperate with appropriate professionals body or the proper authorities in furnishing such information or assistance as may be required. Okay, this cross is almost the same as the previous cross, except here is report there on to his professional engineer with practicing certificate. Okay. 2.2.5. When the professional advice of a registered professional engineer is overruled or amended. Contrary to his advice, the registered professional engineer shall, if the amendment may, in his opinion, give rise to a situation that may endanger the safety, health, and interest of the public, notify, he shall notify his employer or clients. Yeah? So 2.2.5, also same as the professional engineer with practicing line. Okay, so that, that's all for the uh, code of conduct of a registered person, uh, a registered person who we call them as professional engineer with practicing a certificate or professional engineer. Oh, sorry, there's another part three. Okay, a registered professional engineer not to accept benefit from more than one party. Okay, this one is same as a uh, practicing license where we are not supposed to receive a benefit from other party uh, except our client or whatever unless it is declared. 2.3.4, a registered professional engineer acting as advisor or director of a company or an agent shall not participate in decisions with respect to professional engineering service. Huh? So he, he or she has to abstain from the decision making. 2.3.5, a registered professional engineer shall not solicit or accept a contract from the body or agency in which a principal or officer of his organization serves as member of that body. So there is a conflict of interest, uh, then you are not allowed to do so. 2.3.1 A registered professional engineer shall not accept any benefit or compensation, financial or otherwise, from more than one party services on the same project or for professional engineering service pertaining to the same project unless the circumstances are fully disclosed. And agree by all the interested party. Okay, so this is the uh, this is the uh, one of the code of conduct for register engineer, uh, register professional engineer. Then you are not supposed to receive benefit or compensation for any party that have a conflict of interest. Two point three point two. A registered professional engineer shall disclose all known or potential conflicts of interest that may influence or appear to influence his judgment or the quality of his services, okay? 2.3.3, a registered professional engineer shall not solicit or accept any considerations, financial or otherwise, directly or indirectly from outside agents in connection with the work for which he is responsible. Again, this is due to the conflicts of interest, yeah? Okay. Now, let, these are the code of conduct for 
professional engineer. Let's look at a conduct for engineers. Okay, if it is for engineer, okay, for graduate engineer, they say after you have got your, uh, what we say, your this uh, bachelor degree, you can register with the board as a graduate engineer, okay? So for graduate engineer, number one is register graduate engineer not to falsify qualification and etc. It's still the same as what the, uh, what is say for the professional engineer, okay? So there are nice, nice, there are nine courses there, nine subsections. Okay, this one I will leave it to you to read. Yeah. To go through it, basically it's almost the same. Yeah, basically it's almost the same as the uh, for professional engineer. Okay, let's look at it. 3.1.1 A registered graduate engineer shall not falsify his qualification or permit misinterpretation of his qualification. Okay, so this is the same. He shall not misinterpret or exaggerate his responsibility in. Sorry. Uh, he shall not misinterpret or exaggerate his responsibility in or for the subject matter of previous assignment. He shall not misinterpret pertinent facts concerning employers, employee, association, joint, venture, or past accomplishments. Okay? okay? Looks familiar. It's the same as a, for professionals engineer. 3.1.2, a registered graduate engineer shall check with due diligence the accuracy of facts and data before he sign or endorse any statement or claim. Okay? He shall not sign on any such document unless, where necessary, he has made qualifications on, on errors and inaccuracy. He has checked that only you can sign. Okay, if you, without checking carefully, due diligence, the accuracy of the facts and data, please don't sign. 3.3, 3.1.3. 3. 3. A registered graduate engineer shall respond within a reasonable time to communicate uh, to communication from the board or any other relevant authority of matters pertaining to his professional service. Okay, so if there is a local authority or government authority asking you about some question, or the board of engineer is questioning you, you need to respond within the, the stipulated time by them. Okay, so it's reasonable time. 3.1.4, a registered graduate engineer shall undertake assignment only if he is qualified by education and experience in a specific technical field. As what I mentioned just now, if you are a graduate of mechanical engineering, you are not supposed to carry out any assignment or assignment here is work, lah, okay? Assignment or work in civil engineering. You are not qualified, okay? 3.1.5A, a, a, a registered graduate engineer shall sign only those engineering documents that he has prepared or has been prepared under his control, okay? Unless you ask someone to prepare for you, and then you have a control over it, or you personally prepare it, then you can sign the document. Okay, this is the same as a both professionals engineer. 3.1.6, a registered graduate shall be objective and truthful in making professional report, statement, and testimony. You need to be truthful, okay? Trustworthiness. He shall include all relevant and pertinent information in such report, statement, or testimony, which should bear the date indicating the Information was current. This same as a professional engineer with practicing license. Whatever things that you, whatever information that you put, you need to put the date to indicate that the information that you give is current. Okay. Three point one point seven. A registered guide graduate engineer shall not express publicly technical opinions that are not founded upon his competency and knowledge. Okay. If you, if, if the subject or subject matter or the information or data is beyond your competency and knowledge, is outside your your, your scope of knowledge or your competency, you are not allowed to express it publicly. Okay. 3.1.8 A registered graduate engineer shall not issue any statement, criticism, or argument on technical matters that are inspired by pain or by interested party. Okay. If people are paying you, you are not supposed to say something good about them. Okay. Unless the he has prefaced his command by explicit identifying the interested party and who on behalf he is speaking and by revealing the assistance of any interest he may have in the matters. 
unless you get a consensus from the interested party. Okay, otherwise you don't say something that on behalf of someone that will pay you. 3.1.9, a registered graduate engineer shall notify board, board here referring to the Board of Engineers Malaysia in writing uh, within three months if you have committed any offence. Uh, this is same as the uh, professional engineer. If you have committed any offence or false or negligent certification, fraud or dishonesty in Malaysia, okay, or elsewhere or anywhere, you have to write in into the, the, to the Board of Engineers Malaysia within three months, yeah? Or if you are become bankrupt, if you become bankrupt, you also need to inform them. Okay. Okay. Clause number two point two: Register and graduate engineer to certify work only if he has supervised, witness, or inspected such work. So the big title is still same as the professional's uh, engineer, but you got six clauses. What are they? Three point two point one: A registered graduate engineer shall keep proper record of his participation, supervision, inspection, and weaknesses of activity on site. Okay, you need to keep a, a, a record what you have done, what you have not done. Okay, we include the date and time. Okay, so you need to include a very detailed uh, work information that what have you done, what have you supervised, what have you inspect, what have you witnessed, and so forth. 3.2.2, a registered graduate engineer shall check or verify with due diligence carefully the accuracy of facts and data before he sign or endorse any document. Okay, if sometimes some, somebody asking you, hey, this one I've done already, you sign approve. You are not allowed to do so unless you have checked through the accuracy of that time and inspect. Okay, or you have supervised or witnessed or inspected the, the, the work that has been carried out. Then only you can sign. Okay, it's not anyone asking you to sign, then you just sign for them. No. 3.2.3, a registered graduate engineer shall bring to the attention of the engineer or employer at the earliest possible opportunity of any instant where the work or material used are not in compliance with the specification drawing or condition of contract. So if you find out that the, 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 the constructions of the uh, building or machine is not using the material that meeting the specification as you mentioned in the contract, you need to notify your employer or professional engineer immediately. Okay, don't keep quiet. Otherwise, after you constructed your or developed your, your machine, due to the off spec of the uh, component use, then your machine cannot be functioned. Then you are in problem. The worst case is causing harm to the general public, the safety and health of general public. Okay, so 3.2.4, a registered graduate engineer shall not issue any instructions to the contractor or given verification of approval to work out by the contractor unless he has been authorized by the engineer or employer to do so, or unless he authorized by the professional engineer, okay? If nobody authorizes you, you are not supposed to give any instructions or approval to the contractor, okay? And 3.2.5, a registered graduate engineer shall not review facts data. This is same as the professional engineer, okay? Without the prior consent of the engineer, the engineer here means Set a uh, professional engineer, okay, or employer, past and present, except as authorized or required by law, or withholding such information is contrary to the safety, health, and interest of the public. 3.2.6 A registered graduate engineer having knowledge of any violation of this code of conduct or any law of regulations shall report thereon to the engineer or employer and where relevant also to public authorities and cooperate with the engineer or, or engineering. Okay, this one is the same as the uh, professional engineer. Okay, three, cost number three, 3.3. 3. Registered graduate engineer not to accept benefit from more than one party. This one basically is the same as professional engineer. Okay, 3.1.1, a 3.3.1. A registered graduate engineer shall not accept any benefit or compensation, financial or otherwise, from more than one party or professional engineering service on the same project. Okay, or for professional engineering services pertaining to the same project, unless the circumstances are fully disclosed and agreed by all the interested party, need to be transparent. Otherwise, you are not allowed to receive any benefit. 3.3.2 A registered graduate engineer shall disclose all known or potential conflicts of interest that may influence or appear to influence 
his judgment or quali quality of his services, then you need to declare it. You need, 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 need to disclose it, whatever possible or potential conflicts of interest. 3.3.3a, uh, a, a, a registered graduate engineer shall not solicit or accept any considerations, financial or otherwise, directly or indirectly from outside agent in connection with the work of, for which he is responsible. Okay. 3.3.4, a registered graduate engineer acting as advisor or director of a company or an agency shall not participate in decision with respect to professional and engineering services solicited by or provided by him or his organizations. Okay, so this is the so this is the uh, what we say the code of conduct for ng graduate engineer. So if you are observant enough, actually we we, we are talking about three category or, or three crosses in the uh, code of conduct. Uh, cross one professional engineer with practicing certificate. Cross two professional engineer, cross three graduate engineer. Actually, all the three are almost the same clauses that they are they are talking about. Okay, so you need no need to 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 to, to memorize all because uh it's almost the same. Yeah, you just you, you just uh compare and contrast and just fish out the difference uh in the code of conduct for the three. Then you you get it already. Okay. So for the purpose, what is the function of the board? We keep on talking about board of uh, engineer Malaysia. The purpose of the, the purpose of the act, the act here is referring to uh, registration of engineers act 1967. There is a is hereby established a board called board of engineers Malaysia. Okay, the law, the act 138 acts or registration of engineering uh, act 1967. Uh, it's clearly mentioned that the government need to set up a board of engineers to to, to regulate uh, to regulate the activities of engineer. The functions of the board shall be among others. What are the functions of the board? Some some of the main function is to hear and determine dispute relating to professionals conduct or ethics of registered engineers. Okay, to so determine the dispute the. The, the different opinions that relating to the professional's conduct to determine and regulate the conduct and ethics of the engineering professions. So these are the two main functions of the Board of Engineers Malaysia. So under the Registration of Engineering Act uh, 1967, there are five parts there. Okay, Part one is just an introduction, preliminary. Then part three is about uh, talking about what is the Board of Engineers. Uh, sorry, part two. Part three is uh, talking about registration of engineers. It mentioned that everyone, uh, anyone that want to practice engineering practice need to register with the board, be it inspector of uh, work, uh, graduate engineer or professional engineer. If you, have, even though you have got your PhD or you've got your master in engineering, but if you do not register with the Board of Engineer Malaysia, you are not allowed to practice engineering in Malaysia. Okay, so the, the, the criteria is you must register with the Board of Engineering Malaysia, uh, Board, Board of Engineer Malaysia. And, and then take, take, uh, take note that you are not become a member of, uh, there is no membership for BEM, uh, there is only registrations, okay? Membership, professional membership is with IEM, Institute of, Institution of Engineers Malaysia. So part four of the Act 138, Act 138 is the same as uh, uh, registration of Engineering Act 1967. Okay, that is talking about the part four. Is talking about cancel cancellation, removal, or reinstatement of your registration, and so forth. And part five is a general. Okay, register engineer. It means a great. Uh, it means a, a registered engineer. It can be a great uh, a registered graduate engineer. Can be a professional engineer. Can be a temporary engineer or credited checker. Okay, so as far as you register with the Board of Engineers Malaysia, you can call it, call yourself as a registered engineer. Okay, register with the Board uh, with the Board of Engineers Malaysia under section ten bracket one and ten bracket two and select and section of ten A and ten B respectively. Okay, if you, you if you check through later after the lecture, you go through the Act one three eight. You you check section ten ten bracket one ten bracket two. You will see that. There is a requirement talking about registration of graduate engineer and professionals engineer. Okay, 
So graduate engineer is a person registered under the subsections then bracket one. Okay, what it is? The qualification required, okay, subject to this act, a person who holds, that's why only the person that meeting this criteria can register as a graduate engineer. Okay, the qualification as required for graduate membership of the Institution of Engineer Malaysia, IEM, uh, not BEM, uh, okay, and which are recognized by the board, uh, the membership of B IEM is recognized by BEM, or any qualification in engineering which is recognized by the board, okay. The board, if you are study, uh, let's say you study the, the engineering degree from UK, basically UK is only three years, okay, if you study in local in Malaysia, three years engineering degree is not recognized by the board, so you need four years, yeah, so you need to check with board if let's say your, your, whether your degree of engineering is accredited or not, so, so you need to check with the board, see whether it's accredited, if yes, then you can apply as a graduate engineer, if not, then you may need to study to study another master or whatever, okay? And those who meeting these two requirements shall be entitled on application to be registered as a graduate engineer. When you see the word grads register as a graduate engineer, register means with the board, okay? And with IEM is a membership, okay? Then cross B, subject to this act, a person who is registered as graduate engineer under paragraph A under here, shall be required to obtain such practical experience as may be prescribed by the board in order to be entitled to apply for a registration as a professional engineer under the subsection 10.2, uh, 10 bracket 2, okay? Well, what, what this paragraph say is, after you register with the graduate, uh, with the board or uh, IEM as a graduate engineer, you need to obtain your practical experience. You need to keep a, day, uh, you need to keep a log of what activity that you have done and you need to sign by two IR, okay? You need to under, practice your practical under the supervision of a professional engineer, okay? For three to four years, then only you can apply to sit for the professional assessment exam and apply for the registration as a professional engineer. Okay, restriction on employment of unregistered person. Actually, in Malaysia, we are we are not really fully enforced this uh, Act 138. If we really enforce it, there are many factory, they are called their employee or designation, they give it as an engineer, but they are not allowed to call themselves as an engineer if they does not register with the Board of Engineer Malaysia. And they are not allowed to carry out any engineering practices. Okay? So, at Section 24A is saying that no person shall employ a person so proprietary or partnership or body corporate other than a registered engineer, okay? Or an engineer consulting practice to perform professional engineering service. So in order for anyone in Malaysia to, to practice engineering service or engineering practices, the first thing first is to register with the Board of Engineers Malaysia, okay? If you, any employer are restricted or are not allowed to employ any unregistered person, to provide professional engineering service, okay? Let's say you are calling, uh, calling yourself as a mechanical engineer in company ABC. Uh, after you graduated for three years, you gain a lot of experience, but you do not register with board of engineers. The company is not supposed to employ you as mechanical engineers, okay? And even though you have, uh, let's say after you're working for five years, you gain a lot of uh, experience, and then you have your law, you have your, your activity law and so forth, and under supervision, of the uh, IR or the uh, professional engineer, but if you don't still do not uh, register with Board of Engineer Malaysia three or five years ago, you are not qualified yourself to be a to apply to to upgrade your registration from graduate engineer to professional engineer. Okay, so it is very very important after you get your degree immediately register with the Board of Engineer Malaysia as a graduate engineer, okay? Now, restriction on submission of drawing and, 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 and plans. This one restriction is given to all professional, uh, all professionals, engineer, graduate engineer, engineering technologies, uh, inspector of work, all are not allowed to submit any drawing or plans for approval. Only professionals, engineer with practicing certificate are allowed to do so. Okay, so in the law, 
in the Act 138, Section 8 is mentioned that except as otherwise provided under other law, other written law, no body or no person or, or body other than a professional engineer who is residing and practicing in Malaysia or an engineering consulting service providing professional engineering service in Malaysia shall be entitled to submit plans, engineering services, survey, drawing scheme, proposal, report, and so forth. Okay, here I put professional engineer. Actually, it's referring to professional engineer with practicing certificate. Okay, structure of engineering profession in Malaysia. Engineering practice. All the engineering practice or engineer are governed by registration of engineering acts 13, uh, 1967 up to the amendment of 2015. The main, the, the main thing inside this act, the summary is no person is allowed to practice unless he or she is a professional engineer. Okay. Uh, the practice here means submitting document for approval, uh, submitting document, survey or plan or, or drawing. Okay. Professional engineer may use IR before his name or PN after his name. So you see that sometimes sometime one of your lecturer is called IR. Okay, it's called engineer, engineer, Liu engineer, Lao or whatever. If they don't put the IR in front of their name, they can put PN, professional engineer, short form, after their name. Okay, and graduate engineer is required to register before taking up any employment as an engineer. So if you are you are fresh graduate, you are required to register with the board before you can take up a post as an engineer. Otherwise, you are practicing engineering practice illegally. Okay. So now category of engineers. So we have a graduate engineers, we have professionals engineer. Okay. Graduate engineer basically referring to those who have completed an accredited engineering program, like Thai UC uh, uh, engineering program, okay, accredited by Engineering Accreditation Council, EAC. Okay, there is another one I didn't put down here is that is a uh, engineering technologies. Okay, there is engineering technologies who graduated in the uh, engineering technologies degree program. Okay, if they want the engineering technologies want to become a graduate member, they need to study for another year of master in top course. In top course means is a uh, coursework based master, it's not research based. Okay. So this is the, uh, the, the path how the engineering technologies can be a graduate engineer. And the graduate engineer can become a professional engineer after practicing for three to four years or six years, depending on the, the board decisions. And in Malaysia currently, we have two different categories of professional engineer. I think you already mentioned, I uh, know that I already mentioned that. Uh, uh, professional engineer with practicing license, uh, practicing certificate and professional engineer. Okay. So a graduate engineer who has obtained the prescribed practical experience, you can go up to six years of practical experience and pass a professional assessment examination and satisfy all the requirements by EEM, then he can register himself, call himself as a professional engineer. All right. Okay, up to here, any question? I know it's a bit boring to look at the act. There, there's a, there, there are 90 uh, uh, sentences and so forth. Any question before we end the class? Okay, if no question, then we end the class here. And please spend your time to read up uh, the code of conduct for registered personnel. We are going to discuss it during the tutorial next week. Okay. Okay, thank you class.